Welcome to Gus Tech. These two monitors are pretty close to the same, but not quite. Today we have probably the most requested video that we've had here on Gus Tech. We have the BenQ 2411Z, the champion of the budget 144 hertz monitor, maybe not entirely budget, but certainly one of the better 144 hertz 24 inch 1080p monitors out there. It's stood the test of time, it's fantastic, but Asus has a very similar monitor, monitor in the VG248QE. Now this guy is 144 hertz, one millisecond response time, just like BenQ. Price difference on these ranges between 10 to 20 bucks. Right now this is 250 for the Asus, and 270 for the BenQ. That goes up and down. Uh, the BenQ's been as low as 200, same with the Asus. So, uh, you know, pick your poison there when you're gonna get it, but just keep that in mind. These are pretty much the same price. The BenQ monitor, uh, we've done a review on this when comparing it to the 2420G, which is the G-Sync equivalent, essentially. It has a very similar panel, if not the same panel, than it has the G-Sync engine uh, ingrained into it. Now, I love this monitor, I think it's great. I've mentioned before, I don't really love the stand. It looks kind of cheap and it feels kind of cheap. Although it does go higher than the Asus one. So that's a big deal, guys, huge deal, huge deal. So here we have Heaven Benchmark. Uh, we've also been asked that over and over when we've done these monitor comparisons. We're always using Heaven because it's free, it's open to everybody, and it is a good benchmark, and it's really pretty, so you guys can look at it here. Um, we're getting very high frames out of this, so it's not gonna be quite 144 hertz across the board, but pretty close. A couple things to note on these two monitors. Again, as far as panels are concerned and features that you're gonna look at right out the gate, 1080p, 144 hertz, one millisecond gray to gray, uh, both TN panels, very similar viewing angles. They can both go landscape and portrait mode, which in a TN panel, you probably don't wanna go portrait mode in a TN panel because they are designed to be landscape. That's just how, that's just how they work. But either way, you can, you can turn both of them on their side if you want to. It makes it easy to plug in the cables. And if you're just you know programming and you don't really care if the screen is completely true fidelity, it doesn't really matter quite as much. So styling, um, the base of the 2411Z is uh, not the prettiest. It's really bland. It's just this black, you know, not great. I don't know. I don't hate it because it does the job really well. It doesn't take up a lot of space. The square is nice because if you have a small desk, it does keep it from getting, you know, overcoming your keyboard or whatever else, but it isn't pretty. The Asus, on the other hand, is very pretty. I mean, look at this base. It's freaking awesome. It's got words that go all around it that tell you things that people who, you know, are interested in that are gonna read. It's got 3D here. And uh, on the back, it's got your cable management in red, whereas the 2411Z doesn't really have cable management. I mean, it's like, it's weird. It's like this weird looking, like tall, th I don't know, it's weird. Either way, um, so design element wise, if I'm worried about what it looks like on my desk, I'm almost wholly focused on the Asus. That definitely wins the design challenge award. I also really like the reds. Um, it's just neat. Finish of the 2411Z is matte. Everything is matte, no smudges. Very nice if you're a fat guy like me, and I know it's made fun of all over the internet, but like seriously, my stuff gets grubby because I'm just kind of a greasy dude. So deal with it, okay? The Asus finish, is this is the same that they have on their $120 monitors. It looks so good out of the box. Give it two months and there's scratches all over it, micro scratches that start to show. And that looks really crappy later on, especially when you're spending again, you know, a decent chunk of your money. This is the third most expensive thing that's gonna go into your machine. It is. So I don't really love the fact that it's glossy. Um, at least this kind of crappy glossy. I do like the glossy look. I just wish it didn't scratch so easily. As far as panel performance, we're gonna notice something right out the gate. This is running in theater mode, the Asus, and the BenQ is running in movie mode. That, those are pretty much the closest things we could get 
in moats, you're gonna see the BenQ almost looks a little bit more washed out. And honestly, if you're watching movies, which you probably just, you know, should do the TV or an IPS panel at the very least, it's, the BenQ is not great for that. It is really good for gaming because it gives you the good contrast that you want. Not necessarily completely faithful color representation, but you really like the, the visibility that you get in the BenQ as opposed to the ASUS, which is a bit more focused on, hey, we just want it to look good. So if you're more concerned about the aesthetic value, ASUS definitely has the win there, but BenQ wins in the fact that it's more visible for video games. So gaming monitors, I think that kind of goes to the BenQ here. Also, BenQ has a host of features that ASUS doesn't. BenQ has their FPS mode, which you can actually update online that is custom calibrated from other users. Awesome, totally cool feature that is in all of BenQ's monitors. They make their stuff with the idea that you're gonna be using it to play video games. Maybe competitively, but even casually. It just, it looks good and it looks easy to see on a BenQ monitor, as opposed to the ASUS, which is a little bit more closed down. It does have standard, you know, options on there but it doesn't have presets like RTS, FPS 1, 2, like the BenQ has that make it a little bit easier to tweak your monitor without, you know, having to sit there and go uh, green 70, right? BenQ's got that down for you. So customizability, I'm gonna say BenQ wins there. And especially because not only can you customize it more, it's easier to customize if you don't, you know, wanna take a bunch of time with it. So both these monitor stands, again, uh, they do everything you're gonna need them to do. The, be the ASUS has a bevel on the bottom, so it can just turn about, so that's kind of cool. BenQ's is at the top, so it can do the same kind of turning, but it's at the top of the base, or the stand rather, not on the bottom of the base. So keep that in mind. I don't know if you really are too concerned about that. Overall, if I'm gonna compare these two monitors, I'm gonna say that just like their prices and their reviews show online, they're about sixes. They're about the same. I can't really say that one is necessarily better than the other. What I can say is that if you are playing games like Counter-Strike, The Division, um, games that are a little bit more Twitch shooters, I mean The Division's not necessarily a Twitch shooter, but it does definitely require you to be a little bit quicker on your feet and be able to see better. Edge to BenQ on that. They definitely, and they've kind of always had the edge on that because that's their focus. Now, if you want your game to look better, you want it to not only have the benefits of the high refresh rate, cheaper panel, and uh, you know everything that TN brings with it, well, the ASUS is still gonna make it look good. So that's my preliminary review of these two guys. ASUS is prettier, BenQ is probably a bit more functional for the gamers out there. Overall, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these monitors. They both support pretty much the same everything. Um, they also both have versions of these. Each company has versions of basically these same monitors that are running in G-Sync. And again, you're going to have a very similar result with the G-Sync monitors as you do to these non-G-Sync monitors and FreeSync as well. One kind of exciting thing, I don't think it's exciting at all actually. The BenQ uh, does have a little, you know, side jack for your audio here. Can, uh, you can see it there. Audio jack, baby. Um, that's cool. It's uh, on the side. I actually like that more than having it on the back, like the Asus one, because it's you have to kind of get your fingers up in there and get into it. So um, again, just little tiny design differences. If you're looking at either one of these monitors and you don't really care about the things I mentioned specifically, I would just go with whatever one's cheaper because uh, I don't think you necessarily go wrong with these. ASUS made a great monitor here with the VG248, uh, and BenQ's 2411Z is you know, obviously a great monitor as well. So guys, like the video if you like it, which I'm sure you did. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments in the description, or not description, in the comment section, because you can find both these monitors in the description below. If you have any questions, you have any concerns, you have any really great, interesting things that you want to share, or even not great, but semi-interesting things you'd like to share, let us know in the comments, because we love you guys. This whole little shop here, we are Gus Tech. It's March Madness right now. Go Utes. We'll see you next time.